Welcome to the show, everyone. It's so awesome to have you here. Today is important. This topic is going to talk to you about and show you about how authenticity is something that really can be cultivated every day because when you do cultivate authenticity, this is when people really start to feel like their life has meaning. And one of the best ways to cultivate authenticity is through the body. It's through the embodiment practice. So let's talk about radical rituals, the radical ritual method, why I developed it. Let's talk about authenticity and why and how you can cultivate it and how that's really going to be the gate that allows you to pass through into your fully embodied, purposeful, amazing life. Because some of you guys are sitting there just one embodiment practice a day away from totally shattering limitations in your life and igniting this personal revolution of, oh my God, I know who I am. I know what I like. I know what I don't like. I know what I'm about. I know what I'm here for. And this life is incredible. It's not happening to me. It's happening for me. And and just being happy. How many of you right now, either listening to this or watching this, are just not having a good time right now? And it's okay if that's you. I just came out of a slump a little bit as well. It was like a three month slump of just like, okay, things feel a little too challenging. And where's my happiness? Where's my go, go, go energy that I normally have? I had to really just allow myself to be kind of blah, but keep going. And every time you do that, every time you choose to keep going, despite what you might be feeling, despite those like not so positive emotions, we train our nervous system that we can still do great things. We can still be our true selves. We can still follow our purpose, even though it doesn't feel all that comfortable. And I think that's one measure of success is being able to continue onward despite having a bad emotional mindset, uh, a negative mindset, a uh, just kind of living in a funk a little bit. Because ultimately what you're believing deep down is this won't last forever. I know I will get through this. I know I can handle this. I know that what's on the other side of this is going to be victory. But you don't know that unless you practice it, right? So, So embodiment, you guys, you guys know I'm all about embodiment right now. And I'm going, I'm taking it on the road. I've got several in-person events this June. And there's going to be a couple coming up in July. In fact, the rest of this month is just off the chain. Is that how you say it? I forget. That sounded really old school. <clears throat> Lit, on fire, amazing. But I'm taking the Radical Ritual Method in person. And I'm teaching you guys this June and July in person how to do this embodiment technology, this somatic science really, so that you do feel empowered. And I'm going to give you on this podcast four ways or four points that are actually going to help you think about why understanding and embodying your authenticity is so stinking important, okay? And I think it's going to help you feel really beautiful about it too because you're going to be like, okay, That point one, point two, point three, before, those are all things I've been chasing for a while. So, oh, okay. So Kim, embodiment is the way there? Yes, 100%. So let's talk about why. But before we get into why, before we get into those four points about authenticity, I want to tell you a personal story about my health. And I got thinking about this earlier this week where I was like, I know there's a story about my inauthenticity because I've been, I I was on this like authentic roller coaster. Tell me if you can relate to this, where like I'm doing things in life and it feels really good. It feels really aligned. I feel really authentic and I feel really healthy and vibrant and expanded and like on it. Right. And then all of a sudden it's like, I don't like this new boss they hired or what's up with this coworker or, oh my God, why am am I not making more money? And you start to compare yourself and that starts to dip. And you might be comparing yourself in that moment to other people because your confidence drops. And then when you compare yourself 
you automatically cut yourself in half. Every time you compare yourself with someone else, you cut yourself in half. So your authenticity starts to decrease and your inauthenticity in those moments, you're copying other people, you're trying to be like other people, you're like modeling yourself off other people starts to increase. And then and then you catch yourself, right? At some point you hit that bottom of that roller coaster, that dip, and you're like, whoa, 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 this isn't me. This doesn't feel good. Okay. I got to get back to me. I got to get back on the gym train, eating better and my wellness and getting back into my routines and rituals. And then your authenticity starts to increase. So if you've ever been like that, I hear you. I see you. I've been on the authenticity roller coaster for a while and it's not pleasant. And I remembered, I was thinking about this episode. I was like, okay, I remember a couple of times where literally my body was throwing a fit about it and it was screaming at me. And that's the thing about this, you guys. So I'm talking about embodying your authenticity. If you don't, your body will force you. I literally was having heart palpitations. I was so out of alignment with my authenticity. So there is two moments in my life that I can remember. I mean, who knows? When I think about this, there might be more, but the first one I was doing 12 weeks of nursing school and I was in my, yeah, toward the end of the 12 weeks and getting ready to try to get my associate's degree continue. But I was doing clinicals and they were prepping us for clinical work. And, and by the way, shout out to all the nurses out there. You guys are heroes. You guys are incredible. I don't know how you do the job you do. I'm someone who can learn about the diseased body and the path of health and wellness. I can learn about medical conditions. I can learn about the body and I can be behind a book and test and quiz all day long and get A's and 100s. And and that's exactly what I was doing. But when it comes to actually touching a body, like having a patient, I was like, nah, nope, ill, (laughs) ill. I can't. (laughs) I love you guys. I love human beings. But I'm just not equipped to deal with, deal with people when they're really, really sick. So shout out to everyone who does that. You guys are amazing. I don't know how you do it, but you're amazing. Um, so I was, I was working on dummies. They would like have you go to a fake clinical hospital room and there's like a there's like the bed and then there's like a mannequin, like a dummy inside. And you would practice checking vitals or repositioning them in bed. You'd practice going through the routine. I would get so nervous just for that. And I remember seeing myself get nervous and I was like, okay, this is probably like a performance anxiety thing and that's fine. But I also knew that this was something deeper, but I had to ignore it because I was in nursing school and this was the path I was going to do, right? Like I decided, so there's no way I can go back now, which is such a bunch of bullshit. So instead of listening to that more deeply, I went to my doctor and was like, hey, I'm starting to get super nervous. My heart is starting to beat beat out of rhythm, arrhythmia, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. And so my doctor was like, okay, well, you know, make sure she was my long-term general practitioner. So I was like, okay, she's like, all right, well, you know, you've had some heart palpitations in the past, take care of your water intake, decrease your caffeine, make sure you're doing some exercise and meditation, but also here's some beta blockers. And if you don't know what beta blockers are, those are basically really quick release and short duration pills, medicine that will slow down your heartbeat, decrease blood pressure, et cetera. I don't know exactly how it works, but it finds the cells in your heart, I think, that are maybe firing like crazy or something like that. And then, or maybe that's what an ablation is, but I don't know. But anyway, it works and it helps you relax. And it sort of takes the microscope, the spotlight off of like what's happening in your body. Cause I'd like feel my heart beat out of rhythm. If you've ever experienced that before, it's so terrifying and it changes the way you breathe and everything. It's horrible. So you're out, you're stressed. And then, and then you're having this arrhythmia and then you're stressed about your arrhythmia, which <laughs> compounds it. So not great. So I remember going in to see my clinical director at that point because we were getting ready for like midterms or something like that. And um, I told her that I wanted to leave because it finally came to a head where I was like, 
I'm taking these pills, but it's only treating the symptoms. It's not getting to the root of the issue. The root of the issue was that I was not meant to do that. I was being inauthentic by trying to be a nurse. And could I have fought through it? Yeah, maybe. Could I have got my nervous system to adjust to it? Yeah, probably. But would it have wreaked havoc on my body and nervous system in the long run? Yeah. And would I be here right now? Hell no. Nowhere even close to it. So for me, my body was screaming at me. You are not in alignment with your authenticity. You are trying to be someone else. This is not for you. So I quit nursing school and ended up getting a um, an investor loan to or got a bunch of silent partners to invest in Lotus Life. And that shortly after the decision to not do nursing school is when Lotus Life Yoga Center the first time around opened up. So this is around 2011. And that was an incredible, incredible run. Five years working my own business. At one point, there's three locations. There's like 30 employees. I mean, it was amazing. Like ruled ruled the city of Syracuse, Lotus Life did. And shout out to everyone who went to Lotus Life Yoga Center that listens to this. I love you guys so much. That community would not have been what it was without you. And what a fun time we had. And shout out to anyone who came back this most recent time when it opened it for the second time for that brief one year run. That was fun too. It was amazing. Thank you for being there. But I'll tell you what, what I learned about running the business, running the yoga studio the first time around was there's a lot of pressure there. There's a lot of stress. And there's a lot of stress in nursing school. But when I was running my yoga studio, I didn't have heart palpitations. That's because stress is stress, right? Stress isn't allegiant to whether or not you're aligned with your authenticity. Stress is going to show up in all situations, but how you handle it, your relationship to that stress is what's going to change and what's going to be manageable or not based on if you're being authentic. Does that make sense? So in my yoga studio, I was the most authentic me. So stress hit differently. It didn't take me out. It didn't make my heart beat out of rhythm. It didn't make me worry myself sick. You know, I had a lot of stress in that business. Running a business is not easy. No one ever says it has to be easy. Great things don't have to be easy, but you have to listen to your body. And if you don't, it's going to force you to. So I have another story about my heart going out of rhythm. And let's see if you can find the similarities there. You see the pattern emerging. And I'm curious if you guys have had any situations like this where your whole body like broke out in hives or you got sick all the time to your stomach or there's something that just, or maybe you like got an ulcer or constantly had like um, acid reflux or something like that. There's so many ways that our body speaks to us. And this is why one of the, one of the many reasons that an embodiment practice is so critical because it actually helps you tune into and trust the signals and the language that the body is giving you before it turns into a major condition, before it turns into something more long-term and more disastrous on the human body. So this is really important, important, important work. Okay. So the second time I had to go on beta blockers, let me back up real quick though, because when I opened up the studio, I ran that for five years and then I sold it because I had a desire to go back to school. Some of y'all know the story. I went back to school, but I sold the business. I sold to another local yoga studio owner who happened to be her and her partner happened to be looking to expand. So serendipity, I love when that happens. I'm looking to sell. She's looking to buy. It was an effortless, beautiful transition. And it allowed me to go back to school, finish up my undergrad. I got my undergraduate in psychology, the minor uh, major in psychology, a minor in cognitive science, stayed on and got my graduate degree from SUNY Oswego in human computer interaction. And all the while, I mean, that was amazing time, but I was also going through the most difficult time in my life. I went through a divorce. First divorce, hopefully only divorce, but man, if you've ever gone through a divorce, that is literally like a death. You are mourning. You are in complete mourning and your whole life is shattered. But I still had to go to school. 
I still had to apply myself. And you know what? Looking back, I mean, I I was pouring myself into my studies anyhow, but that lit a even bigger fire under my ass because I was like, okay, there's going to be no one there to support me. It's just me now. It's just my salary. It's just my life. It's up to me 100%. And I've never been like that before. I've always had a partner. I've always had someone to share the rent. I've always had someone to help me with get groceries. You know, I've always partnered up. And this is my first time I was like, oh my God, there's no one. What am I going to do? And then I was like, oh my God, there's no one. It's just me. And it like totally helped me accelerate even more into my studies. But I get out of college and I was getting an internship while I was completing my graduate degree and at a local tech company in Syracuse. Well, they offered me a full-time position. Hooray, right? And so I worked that, once I graduated, I worked that full-time position for about two and a half years. And amazing company. You guys have heard the story before. Amazing company on paper. That job was everything. I mean, I was doing such a great job that they were talking about potentially making a new position for me that embraced my new skills even more. And that allowed me to accelerate and just really shine. But I learned then that once again, I might have been out of alignment with my authenticity because I started to get my heart palpitations again. And I was like, oh no, like here they are. I thought I moved past this. I thought this is what I was supposed to be doing. I like, I got a graduate degree in this and this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. And once again, I went to the doctor, different doctor this time, but you know, and he was like, well, what's going on in your life? I was like, well, I just bought a new house. Congratulations. Thank you. I just started a new job, a new job. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and I'm leading a yoga retreat in a month to which he like kind of cocked his head and was like, wait, 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 you're a yoga teacher and you're coming to me with stress, stressful situation and issues and a heart palpitation. And I was like, yes, I'm human. Yoga teachers feel stressed too, you know, (laughs) but like, he was like, wow, you've got a lot of major things going on. I said, yeah, I do. And uh, something had to give. My fear of speaking, my fear of being seen at work, my fear of someone's going to find out I don't really, really, really love this job was all right there. But I was doing such a great job at burying it all. Because it it was fun and it was exciting. And it was actually something I enjoyed, but I didn't love. I was good at it, but I wasn't great at it. There was stress, but my body was not handling it well. So I got the beta blockers again, started taking them right before I had to do like town hall, like um, town hall presentations before I had to go live in front of this company. It was like 200 people and growing. So our Zoom calls were huge. And it was a mess. And I did that for two and a half years. And then as you guys know, the story goes, I mean, I eventually got out of that. Okay. So my point is in telling you all of that is if, first of all, if any of you are going through something like this right now, go to your doctor, go to your doctor and get yourself checked out and do what you need to do with medication for now. But there is a deeper discussion you need to have with yourself. If you're going through any of these, if you have physical pain, if you have migraines constantly, if you have, if you can't sleep, you need to look at your life. And one of the ways you can do that and start to examine what do I really want? Who am I really? What is really the issue is to have an embodiment practice because you're not going to get at it through the head up here. Okay. The head will not give you the answers that you want. The head is where you're stuck probably. And so we need to get out of that and get into the body. Okay, so let's get into one, two, three, and four. Points one, two, three, and four on how radical rituals, the radical ritual method specifically, helps you reclaim your truest self. Okay, so we're gonna explore together through these four points how radical rituals can support you in aligning with your authentic essence and living a life of true purpose. How awesome is that? You ready? Okay, let's go. So the first point, the first way it does this, 
is by helping you rediscover your authentic voice. Radical Ritual Method. It really prepares a sacred space for self-expression. There were so many times I was afraid in my previous marriage, afraid to speak about energy and yoga and meditation and mantra and, and positive thought and affirmations because the family that I married into were all in the head. They were overthinker, very intelligent, super hypercritical people, data-driven people, lovely people. I had a, a great time knowing them and getting to know them and my former nieces and nephews. Like seriously, I had sisters-in-laws that were incredible. But at the surface, this was a very analytical, intelligent family. And here I was like hippie, dippy, granola, peaceful, energy, practice, alien yoga teacher being like, you know, let's, let's manifest, let's meditate on this. What does your body say? And like, they constantly would poke fun, especially the matriarch of the family and the patriarch, the patriarch spe spe specifically. So it was a lot to handle and I didn't handle it well. So I buried it. I buried my authentic voice because it didn't feel safe. So if you want to find your voice, Meaning not just like the, the actual vocal representation, the phonication of your voice. I mean, the, uh, the essence of who you are, the feeling, it feels good when I talk about me, it feels good to, to have an authentic voice means it feels good to speak what's on your mind. It feels good literally to say what's in your heart. It feels safe. That's what I mean when I say to speak your authentic voice, to recover, to reclaim your authentic voice, because it's aligned with your inner truth. If you're speaking out of alignment with your truth, you're not going to like what you say. And this is where people get laryngitis. This is where my mom would break out in hives before. This is where people's voice, like literally you get, um, I had one private client who went to the doctor because she felt this lump on her throat. Turns out there was absolutely nothing wrong with her, only that she was truly, truly missing her kids who went away to college. And she was unable at the time to speak that truth. But then she let it be known to her kids and her partner that that was the issue. And she was truly missing motherhood. Once she expressed that through the vocalization, almost instantly her symptoms went away. That's what I'm talking about. Your authentic voice is an opportunity to reconnect with your inner truth and express it authentically in, listen to this, in all areas of your life. So your homework from this is to really look at, well, where am I speaking my truth? And it's in alignment with my truth over here, but over there in that group of friends or that group of circles, I'm not my truth. And listen, it might not be that you're able to do anything about it right away, but there also might be a great chance that you can. You can start to sneak in a little more authenticity and trust, trust that you're going to be loved, that you're going to be supported, that you're going to be kicked in and kicked out of the places you're supposed to be. The more authentic you become, the more you're going to recover your authentic voice. And everywhere you go, you are going to be that one beautiful, big, shining being everywhere you go. And we need that from you. That's the most amazing version of you. That's the version of you that's going to open every single door and allow you to walk in as your truest self. So your authentic voice, I'm speaking a little bit beyond just speaking your truth. Like I said, the phonication part, the actual speaking of the words. This is really about allowing. Embodiment, the radical ritual method that I teach, allows you to reclaim and reconnect with your inner truth and express it authentically in all areas of your life. What could you do with that? I mean, I don't even need to get to points two, three, and four right there. That's a huge doorway for so many of you listening that if you could have that, if you could feel it, not think it, but feel that that's safe to do, your whole life would change because you had transformed. So let's get to point number two. These are all going to connect and give you a big holistic picture and an overview of why the radical ritual method is so incredible. Now, point number two is 
the radical ritual method allows you to embrace vulnerability and self-acceptance. Embracing vulnerability and self-acceptance, okay? Because without an embodiment practice, we don't have anything in the day that cultivates self-acceptance at all. Most of the time, if you watch and observe and get really curious about who you are and how you're being in your day, most of us are constantly out seeing the world and then responding to the external stimulus. There's like an urgent need to be liked. There's an urgent need to conform. There's an urgent need to feel accepted. But we're not having any urgency at all with accepting ourselves, with loving ourselves, with being vulnerable with ourselves. Your vulnerability is a gateway to personal growth. It truly is. I'm going to say that again. Your vulnerability is a gateway to personal growth. And really, the radical rituals, they help, they work in this particular point because they help you to release that awful grip of self-judgment that we all have. To release the script that I need to be perfect in everything I do. That's, That's huge for me. I don't know about you, but like, What radical rituals have done for me is they've allowed me to release that perfectionism because perfectionism was me really hating myself. Perfectionism gave me an out. If I had to be a perfect perfectionism, if I had to be someone who absolutely had to be right and perfect all the time, well, then when I wasn't, which is all the time because perfectionism does not exist, then I always had a reason to get down on myself, to hate myself, to blame myself, to shame myself. So it took radical shift and understanding that I have to take responsibility for that because I am giving myself out all the time, all the time to hate on myself. And if I'm all about love and expressing myself and being authentic and embracing my personal growth, well, then I can't give myself the out of perfectionism because if perfectionism doesn't exist, I have no choice but to love where I'm at all the time, love who I am all the time. Do you feel that? So to my perfectionists out there, drop that shit. It is a losing game and it's only increasing probably the the ability to hate on yourself, which we're not about that anymore. That was last year. Okay. That was last year. We're done with that. This year we're loving ourselves. We're stepping into our truest, most authentic self. Okay. So releasing self-judgment is number one. You can't do it with the mind alone because your judgment is up here in the mind. And you're fighting fire with fire up here. So when we think our way through problem solving, when we think our way through self-improvement, we're coming at the lack of self-improvement with the same brain and the same neurological pathways that have the lack of self-improvement. So I'm trying to overwrite a script in my brain. I'm trying to make new neuronal connections in my brain but I'm actually doing it on the same neurological pathways as before, believing the story that I've somehow improved myself. Do you follow that? So what the brain is needs, what the brain needs is a buddy, an ally. It needs the body. So when you do an embodiment practice and you expand your energy and then you release concerns and worries and you just allow your body to be a body and do the things it needs to do and move the way it wants to do in steps one and two of the four-part radical ritual method, steps one and two are all about that. We raise energy and we respond. We raise energy and respond. We raise, respond, raise, respond, raise, respond, raise, respond. Now we start moving and moving and moving. And then we recalibrate. We recalibrate. We get to our own rhythm. We break the the norms, the social norms. We break out of the box we're in. And then finally, boom, four, we reclaim. Raise, respond, recalibrate, reclaim. Those are the four steps. Those are the four elements inside of the radical ritual method. When you get to step two, which is respond, that's essentially what you're doing every single moment is you're being vulnerable, you're standing up for yourself, and you're releasing judgment. And you do it through a very benign way of just saying, oh my gosh, my arm wants to do this weird movement over here. I'm going to let it. And I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to judge my body. I'm done with that shit. And my elbow on this arm wants to do this. What's this? I don't even know. And for those of you just listening to this podcast, I'm just moving my arms in bizarre ways right now. (laughs) 
um, those of you watching this on YouTube, you get the beautiful example of my body just moving like this. But what I'm doing is I'm showing my nervous system that in the physical form, I can move in a unpatterned way. And it's vulnerable because people could see me. People could see me moving like a weirdo and they don't know, or maybe they do know that I didn't plan for this. And if I don't plan for things and I'm just being in the moment, well, that's where all the endless possibilities are. And because I'm allowing myself to be vulnerable and in the moment of endless mystery and possibilities, I might not be able to be perfect. And someone's going to see me being imperfect. Now, the only person that's going to see you is you. Ain't nobody paying attention to you. (laughs) When I get people together in a group and we're doing this all live, everyone's thinking the same thing. Is someone going to see me looking like a weirdo, jumping up and down and shaking my arms and legs like this? They might for a second, but then they go, they're right back into themselves. No one's seeing you. The only person that's seeing you in that moment is you. So again, in step two of the radical ritual method, it's all about fierce self-acceptance and a letting go of judgment. That's what allows you to step into your truest self with love and compassion and embracing your vulnerability. Loving this? Are you loving this? I hope so. Okay, let's get to point three on how the radical ritual method will help you reclaim your truest self. Point three is that it allows you to cultivate an embodied presence. This is where radical rituals help you to be in the moment. This is where radical ritual method is an anchor for you while you're doing the practice, but also every single day and every moment outside of the practice. In fact, I would argue the practice never ends. The radical ritual method is designed for you to kind of hit that high and expand and feel like, yes, I can. I'm the woman, I'm the man, I'm the person for the job. Get out of my way. Here I come, life. And then you're in that level of integrity, wholeness all day long. Okay, so this is where we are learning how to transform into this area of our life of just being fully present, fully in the now, embodied presence. So in other words, we're not thinking about, oh, I'll be present now. Yes, I'm thinking about a present. And, oh, there's a lampshade, there's a plant, there's a cat, there's a yoga mat, there's all these things. We're not just thinking about our space. We're not just thinking about the now, but we are living in the now. We are embodied, present, feeling, grounded comes to mind right now. Fully in the body and allowing that to be the source of empowerment, allowing that to ultimately help you make conscious and deliberate decisions that are aligned with your authentic self. How many times throughout the day are you making micro decisions that are unaligned? A lot of us, we're doing it too much. And what's at risk there is you building a habit of making unaligned, inauthentic decisions that are against who you are. And this, I don't mean to make this like into a doomsday scenario here. Sometimes it's benign, but and, and then you don't even realize it. But the, the problem is that it adds up over time. And then it comes out in really big ways where you're dating that person again and again and again, just in different form. Why can't I find the lover of my life? Why can't I find a person who really respects me? Why do I always get into these abusive relationships? Well, are you actually conscious of the decisions and choices you're making and how right now they're out of alignment with your authentic self again? Okay, so cultivating that embodied presence, cultivating being in the moment, not just with the mind, but the whole you, the whole self is really powerful and critical for you moving past old patterns that no longer serve you and trusting it, totally trusting it. And when you get to this stage where your embodied presence is just who you are, you are constantly in a mode of trust. And if you bop out of it for a second or something knocks you off, you kind of just go, oh, okay, I'm, I'm out of alignment. Oh, this is all inauthentic. And you quickly readjust. That's the beauty here. That's where we're headed, you and I, okay? That's where you get to go with the radical ritual method is that 
you get to adjust so much quicker. And what I see women consistently get to is this place where they are course correcting. One of my past one-on-ones and mastermind students, Alyssa, shout out to Alyssa. She loves using that phrase, course correcting. And I think it's brilliant because that's what we do. We get to the point where instead of, this is old, this is like old you, or maybe for some of you, this is where you are now. So this is going to resonate where it's like, okay, when I make a mistake, air quotes there, I ruminate. And I stay in the energy of that error for days, for some of you months. And you shame yourself consistently. There's no love. There's no compassion because we're in that perfectionism mode. I should have done better, we say. I should have known better. Whereas when you start to embody your presence, you embody your authenticity, you will see yourself make these sort of judgment errors. We all do. We're human. We're human learning. We're we're human, right? We're all here on this path to learn. But the difference now is you see yourself make a little error or a boo-boo or a whoopsie. And instead of staying there for weeks, hours, days, months, years in this dread, in this perpetuating story of I can never be what I know I want to be. Look at, look at all the errors I keep making. Instead of saying there, we just go, oh, that's that aligned with my full authenticity. Isn't that funny? I'm going to learn from this moment and redirect myself, course correct, right back on track. Does that make sense? Do you love that? But that's where you're going. That's where you get to head with this type of embodiment practice. This is why it's so powerful because not only do you feel better, but in practical daily life, you can course correct so much faster. You're just keeping what I call on plane. You keep on plane. You don't sink down into the water. You stay on plane and you move much faster throughout the day. You make little errors, you course correct. Little error, course correct. Get sad, course correct. Get worried, course correct. Get jealous, course correct. Get fearful. You get this, that, 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 ping pong, back and forth. And then you just constantly just micro adjust, micro adjust, micro adjust. So you're more so on a straight line than you are zigzagging way over here to the left, zigzagging way over here to the right, zigzagging over there, going up, going down. Holy crap, going all over with this explosive story about how we're not good enough anymore. Is that getting you anywhere? We all know that the fastest path to anything is a straight line. So let's start heading in that straight line, right? Let's start getting there. And one of the ways to do that, I find the only way actually, I believe, I believe in my opinion to do that is with the radical ritual method because it's so instantaneous and it's so much fun and it's so powerful. Okay. Let's get to the fourth and final point. Are you loving this? I really hope you are. I hope you're getting so much benefit out of this. I'm getting benefit out of remembering all of this right along with you. I'm becoming the student in this moment right along with you. And I love it. I thank you so much for this opportunity to share this. Okay. So the fourth and final point I want to bring up that why radical rituals and how the radical ritual method works to help you embody your authenticity is that it helps you align with what we call our core values. Your core values are your compass. It's your North Star. Core values are a lot like your purpose. It's it's who you are intrinsically. It's, It's what you feel is right and what is wrong. And it helps you really, a radical ritual, an embodiment system like this helps you really uncover and unearth what truly matters to you. Not to your mom, not to your dad, not to your spouse, not to your kids, not to your friends, not to your sisters, but right, like to you. Let me ask you right now do you know what truly matters to you? If you don't, it's okay. A lot of people don't, which is why I'm bringing it up. And you're not an awful person for not knowing, but you know a lot about what other people, what truly matters to them. That's just because that's how we're raised and we're taught, especially as women. If you're a woman woman watching this or listening to this, you probably are like, yeah, I've put a lot of other people first before me. And that's just what we're taught. So now we just have to learn how to think about ourselves in the most beautifully holistic, selfish way is to really embrace ourselves first here. This is alignment with your empowerment and what truly matters to you. It helps you empower the choices you make, right? Like, how do you know what to choose in life if you don't know what really matters to you? That's scary to me. That's scary to me that people are making choices off of stuff they don't even align with. 
that's the sleepy part of the US. That's the sleepy part of America. That's the sleepy part of humans in general across this entire globe is what's at risk here is us being sleepy and not really understanding what matters to us and not embodying it and not being in the moment with it and not knowing how to align with our authentic, authentic, authentic voice, not being self-accepting of ourselves, not being vulnerable and, and really being able to release self-judgment on ourselves. All of these things are risky if we don't do this. That's why I believe this work is so critical and so important. So when you discover the power of living in your in, in alignment with what truly matters to you, there is a momentum there because you become core solid, rock solid on honoring what you believe to be true and honoring who you are. Guys, this is the seed to boundaries. Are you hearing that? This is a seed to you knowing this is for me and that isn't. I'm here for that person. I'm not for that other person. I'm here to have these discussions. I'm not here to have those discussions. I'm here to, to be representing this. I'm not here to represent that. I'm here to bring this forward. I'm here to not, right? Like this is how we establish boundaries is by first understanding what truly matters to you, your core values. And ultimately, when we live in alignment with this truth, we feel like we have a fulfilling purposeful life that we get to live. And wouldn't that feel so wonderful? Wouldn't that feel so wonderful to know that you existing in a specific way? I'm not talking about the things you do. I'm talking about awakening and embodying who you are. Your authentic, truest self is the way forward to a purposeful life, a meaningful, happy life. That's what awaits you. And that is what you'll get when you participate in the Radical Ritual Method. So you guys, here it is. Of course, however you're consuming this video or listening to this audio, underneath this, there is a link to join me on the Radical Ritual Revolution. I'm coming to a town near you. Well, not exactly. I don't know where you're listening. But if you are in the upstate New York area, come and find me. Get in on this community. This is a growing movement right now. And it's going to be huge, mark my words. And this is where you will find absolute transformation. This is just a tiny bit. What I just talked about today is just a tiny bit of the radical ritual method. There's so much more to explore. And there's things that you even will uncover that I haven't uncovered because it's your authentic experience that's adding to the collective movement that we have going on together. This is so important. If you're feeling the call that you come to this as well, because you're going to add to that collective melting pot of incredible spices and juices of all of our authenticity. I cannot wait. So coming up in just a couple of weeks on the 16th is my first in-person event at the Crescent Collective in Liverpool. Then on the Tuesday following up 20th, I'll be at Brightbeck Park in Oswego right here in my my hometown, well, not really my hometown, but I live here now, so it's kind of my hometown, will be outdoors having what I'm calling a somatic sunset party where you'll get to come out. And not only do I guide you through the four parts of this holistic empowerment system, but you're going to get a workbook. We go in deep. We set some goals. We talk as a community. We dance. We move. But also I give you more on the neuroscience too. So I pack in the data, the relevancy, the information that's about why this works at the beginning and break it down for you even more. So come and find me. And there's going to be a couple more events coming up in July. I've got a retreat coming up, a weekend retreat in August, no, October. And then there's a mastermind coming up in November. There's a whole lot of amazing things coming your way. So get in. The link underneath this is there for you to sign up. Okay, you guys, I love you so much. Have an awesome day and I will be with you soon. Thank you for listening.